Welcome. Let's take a look at analyzing the behavior of a logarithmic function. We will be looking at the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing, concave up and concave down, as well as locations of relative extrema and points of inflection if they exist. So to get started, we need to consider um, the critical points of the derivative of our function in order to be able to identify intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. Uh, when analyzing behavior of functions such as this, it's important to take note of the domain of the function. As I look at this function, I'm taking the natural log of the quantity x squared plus 1. Now, typically, the domain of the natural log function is um, ln of x has a domain of only positive values. But notice that instead of x in, as our argument, we have x squared plus 1 as our argument. And x squared plus 1, if I evaluate this at 0, uh, I will have 1, and, the, and that's perfectly valid input for the natural log function. If x happens to be negative, when I square it, it turns uh, an input value. It turns that input value positive and then adds 1. So that will certainly be greater than 0. And if x is positive, if my input value is positive and I square it and add 1, it will certainly be uh, positive. So x squared plus 1 um, is positive for all x that are real numbers. So all x in the real numbers. So we don't have any domain restrictions for this particular function. So let's go ahead and find our, our first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to, now keep in mind that we are using the natural log function. So by the chain rule, I'm going to attend to the derivative of the natural log function first. So that would be 1 over the argument. In this case, my argument is x squared plus 1 times, now I'm going to attend to the chain rule. And by the chain rule, I need to take the derivative of the argument. In this case, that's 2x. So our first derivative is 2x over the quantity x squared plus 1. At this point, we need to identify our critical points. There are two sources for critical points. The first source we'll consider is f prime of x is equal to 0. In this case, that would mean 2x over x squared plus 1 equals 0. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by x squared plus 1, on the right-hand side, I will still have 0, and on the left-hand side, I'll simply have 2x equals 0, which means x equals 0 is a critical point. Now, the second source of uh, critical points for the derivative is where my derivative does not exist. That means where does 2x over x squared plus 1 um, does not exist. So I look to my denominator, and my denominator is the hopeful place where I might find values of x that would cause my function to not exist. But if I do that, and I set my denominator equal to 0, I have x squared plus 1 equals 0. Keep in mind that x squared is a, will be either 0 if x is 0, and if x is any other number, when I square it, that will be a positive number. So I will have 1 
plus some positive number. So that should lead us to recognize that it is not possible for x squared plus 1 to equal 0. So there are no critical points from looking at our first derivative equal uh, not existing. So at this point, we have only a single critical number, that is x equals 0. So we will go ahead and divide the x-axis um, at that x value and start testing our, our first derivative. So we're testing f prime of x, and we're going to end up with two intervals to test. One interval is to the left of x equals 0, so that's negative infinity to 0. And the other interval is from 0 to positive infinity on the right side of 0. Now for each of those intervals, I need to select a test value to determine whether this, the first derivative is positive or negative on each interval. So for the interval from negative infinity to 0, let's go ahead and test f prime at something easy like negative 1. This would give us 2 times negative 1 in our numerator over negative 1 squared plus 1 in our denominator. Now our numerator is negative 2, our denominator is positive 2, and at this point we can see that the derivative in this interval will be negative. Let's go ahead and test a value in the interval from 0 to infinity, something simple like 1. So this time we're interested in f prime at 1, which is 2 times 1 over 1 squared plus 1. In this case, we get positive 2 over 2, and we can see that in this interval that our first derivative will be positive. And so we need to now interpret what we have here. On the interval from negative infinity to 0, the derivative is negative. That means that the function is decreasing on that interval. f of x is decreasing. On the interval from 0 to infinity, our, our derivative is positive, so that means that our function is increasing on that interval. So let's go ahead and record that information first. So we would say that our function is increasing on the interval from 0 to positive infinity and decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to 0. Now, while we're looking at this information, we can consider locations of relative extrema. Now, recall that we did have a critical point. Our critical point was here at x equals 0. And notice that x equals 0 is, in fact, part of the domain of our function. So we can consider x equals 0 as a potential relative maximum or relative minimum. Now I notice that the function goes from decreasing behavior to increasing behavior, which tells me that I'm going to have a relative minimum at x equals 0. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 0 by the, and in this case where we look at the increasing and decreasing behavior of the function, then, it, then we say that is by the first derivative test. But we need the, the maximum or the minimum value. 
So let's go ahead and uh, evaluate our function at our critical point. So f at 0 is the natural log of 0 squared plus 1, which is the natural log of 1. And the natural log of 1 is, in fact, 0. So reporting out our findings, then, we say by the first derivative test, derivative test, there is a relative, and what did we say? We said a relative minimum of 0 at x equals 0. Now, um, just, just to make it clear, this, is, this does represent an ordered pair, 0, 0, where the y value is the maximum or minimum uh, that the function achieves, and then the x value is the location where that maximum or minimum happens to occur. So that takes care of two of the things that we were looking for. Now let's go ahead and move on and start considering uh, the concavity of the function and whether there are any points of inflection.